Joyful Blessings. This is Kaylin Castell. I am the co-founder of the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School and the creator of the Celestial Timings Ezine. This is on the difference between signs and constellations and why they're both important. I'm hoping that this presentation will help you to understand that difference and to appreciate them both. And also why there are not 13 signs now or ever. And I will explain a little bit more about that as we get toward the end. The first thing we're going to do, though, is look at the seasonal cycle and how the seasons have to do with the Earth's journey around the sun. So we say we start with winter and the shortest night uh, the shortest day and the longest night of the year that slowly gradually grows into spring equinox where we have a balance of day and night then we get to summer solstice when we have the longest day and the shortest night and then coming back around to again a balance of day and night at the autumnal equinox as the days shorten to uh, winter solstice when we again have the shortest day this is very important in our understanding of signs and we'll explain a little bit more about that as we go the thing to know about constellations are they are the star patterns in the sky and what i'm showing you here is that the constellations have two names the first um, in this first slide uh, we can see above that the the constellations are named pisces aries taurus gemini cancer leo but below they're named the fish the bull the ram the twins, the crab, the lion, and uh, then they, they, so they have alternate names. And in shamanic astrology, we use the alternate names to reduce confusion because when they were named the same names, people thought they were the same thing, and because they still have the same names, it's very confusing. So you can see here the maiden or the virgin priestess is what we call it in shamanic astrology, the scales, the scorpion, the archer, the sea goat, the water bearer. Below, it's showing Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius. So if we use the alternate names, then we can separate the, out the difference between signs and constellations. One thing that astronomers and tropical astrologers agree on is uh, the coordinates for the seasonal points. The four seasonal points are zero Aries for the spring equinox, zero Cancer for the summer solstice, zero Libra for the fall equinox, and zero Capricorn for winter solstice. In this slide, you're seeing the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School logo, and that it is a teaching on the difference between signs and constellations. On the outside ring, you can see that the symbols of the signs and also their names are located here. So if we say we started with uh, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, on the inside ring, you can see the constellations and what signs or seasons they're currently uh, linked with. So for example, the December solstice is located between the archer and the scorpion. And remember, December solstice is zero Capricorn, um, the winter time. The spring equinox is uh, located between the fish and the water bearer at zero Aries. And the June solstice at zero Cancer is located between the twins and the bull. And the September equinox is located between the lion and the virgin priestess. And just to say for those who may be watching from the southern hemisphere, uh, it's exactly the opposite of what I've said uh, for, for those located south of the equator. Now, um, the, one of the ways to understand how this is working is that from zero Aries at the spring equinox point, the next 30 degrees or 30 days is the sign or season of Aries. And from there, we go into the season of Taurus, zero degrees Taurus. And then the next 30 degrees or 30 days is the sign or season of Taurus, then Gemini. And then when we reach zero Cancer, we reach the summer solstice point, And the next 30 degrees is Cancer till we reach the zero Leo as, um, point, And then it'll be the season of Leo. So this uh, slide is showing the difference um, or the you know where the zero Aries point is currently located. I'll be explaining a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, and about 30 degrees later, or 30 days later, the sun will have moved to the very beginning of the fish. So Aries is currently located under the circlet of the fish. Taurus is currently located around the beginning of the fish. Gemini, the season or um, sign of Gemini is located in the constellation of the Bull. And Cancer, zero Cancer point, is located on the Galactic Cross. I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about that um, as we go along. And the season of Leo is located between the constellation of the Twins and the Crab. 
the again here we have where the current seasonal points are located with the constellations but these points move one degree every 72 years and so if we go back 2,000 years the previous solstice or zero Capricorn point was located between the goatfish and the archer and the spring equinox point was located between the ram and the fish and of course their opposite points were also the cross you know moves backwards or actually um, it looks like it's moving backwards from this perspective, but it's pre the, the these moot they precess through this through this uh, constellations. So if we go back one quarter turn, 6,500 years ago, the December solstice was located where the spring equinox currently is located between the fish and the water bear, and the spring equinox is located where the summer solstice is currently located between the twins and the bull. Uh, so this um, just is showing you how over time, one degree every 72 years, these seasonal points are moving through all the constellations. And it takes about 26,000 years for them, these points, to move through every single constellation to come back to a starting point. In order to understand this a little better, we need to uh, know the definitions of the astronomical coordinates. So the first one is the galactic equator, that is the plane of our galaxy. And when you look at the Milky Way, we're looking at the plane of the gal galaxy and the galactic equator runs right through the center of that. Uh, and so you can see that on this slide here in the purple line. The ecliptic is the green line and that is the plane of our solar system and the path that the planets follow. It's also the band where the zodiacal constellations are located. These two planes, the plane of the solar system and the plane of the galaxy, intersect and form the galactic cross. Okay, so we'll be coming back to that. And the other thing to know is that the celestial equator of the Earth, because the Earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees, when that is expanded out into space, uh, it helps to define the coordinates of the seasons. So here you see the Earth and it's tilted 23 and a half degrees. The, um, of course, the celestial equator is tilted up, and the ecliptic is on a, a, a flat plane. And where those two circles are intersecting is the equinox. You can see that again on this slide. It's also showing you where the spring equinox points are, or the e both equinox points are, the winter and the summer solstice are. And the solstices are the seasons of the longest and shortest days, where the two circles are the furthest apart. And where the two circles meet, it's the equinoxes, and that's the um, equal days. So again, the seasons are marked by the signs, and we could say, just a reminder, zero Capricorn is the winter solstice, and zero Cancer is the summer solstice, and then zero Aries is the spring equinox. So in this slide, what we can see is the green line is the ecliptic, or the path the planets follow, and there's a little sun, um, where the red line, and that's the celestial equator, are crossing under the circlet of the fish. So this is just another view of something I was showing you on the Shamanic Astrology logo. So that's where the sun rises at spring equinox at the current time. A thousand or 2,000 years ago in 1 AD, it was located at the beginning of the fish or Pisces, the constellation also known as Pisces. Uh, and you can see why this is confusing because we're looking at the zero Aries point. So... Um, that was the stars that was behind the spring equinox at, in uh, about 2,000 years ago. Now, in 3,000 um, AD, or about 1,000 years from now, the vernal equinox, where the two lines are crossing, the celestial equator and the ecliptic, is located way into the water bearer. So you can see how these lines are moving one degree every 72 years, slowly over time, shifting into different constellations. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means as we go along. Currently, the zero cancer point, or the summer solstice, when we have the longest day and the shortest night, the sun is rising on the galactic cross between the twins and the bull. The purple line here is the um, galactic equator, and then we have the green line for the ecliptic, and the red line, again, is the celestial equator, and it's where the two lines of the ecliptic and the celestial equator are furthest apart that we have the summer solstice um, showing up. And I'll talk a little bit more about this as we go along. The um, autumnal equinox is located currently under the tail of the lion. So the green line of the ecliptic and the red line of the uh, galactic um, equator, I mean the celestial equator, crosses and is right underneath the tail of the lion. 
in 3000 AD, this will have shifted into the body of the lion. So again, that slow movement of these points through the constellations, these seasonal points through the constellations. Currently, the December solstice is rising on the galactic cross between the archer and the scorpion, and this is also near galactic center. And uh, what we can see here is that 2,000 years ago, the um, sun was rising in the archer. It's also known as Sagittarius. But again, we're talking about the zero Capricorn point. So it's better if we call it the archer so we can reduce the confusion. And then in 3000 AD, the winter solstice will be rising near the heart of the scorpion. Uh, and that's the zero Capricorn point. So you can see how far it has moved. And this slide actually gives you the perspective of where it was in 1 AD in the Archer, where it currently is located on the Galactic Cross, and where it will be located about a thousand years from now um, near the heart of the Scorpion. So as we um, are looking at these constellations, one of the things to uh, note is that Ophiuchus, and this is a slide showing you Ophiuchus, uh, and um, how it is above the scorpion and um, uh, the archer. And the green line is the ecliptic again. The red line is the celestial equator. The purple line is the galactic um, equator. And Ophiuchus's feet just barely touch the ecliptic. This is important because Ophiuchus was not originally one of the zodiacal constellations. I think it was in 1927 or 1928, astronomers redo the constellational boundaries and, and at that time included Ophiuchus on the ecliptic. So this is a recent development. Uh, and what we could say is that even if Ophiuchus had been one of the original zodiacal constellations, it still would not be the 13th sign because the signs are seasonal and Ophiuchus is a constellation. Uh, and the, the signs are divided up into 30 degree segments in, uh, into a 360 degree circle giving us uh, 12 equal divisions of 30 degrees or, thir or 12 months of the year. So that's how we get the 12 signs. Now this is again um, showing how the sun is moving one degree every day and about 30 degree, you know, 30 degrees every month, um, and it's moving through the different constellations. So, uh, shamanic astrology asks two questions. One is to what degree does the constellation inform the sign? The Hellenistic astrologers who came up with the sign-based zodiac asked the same question. To what degree does the constellation inform the sign? Every 2,000 years, the season is going, or the sign is going to move into a new constellation, and the constellations have their own meaning, their own significance, and the seasons have their own meaning and their own significance. So those two things are interacting together, and this is why myth and symbol changes over time. And so, um, you know, how does this contribute to evolution and change? How, how, how do we an understand the evolution of the signs and the archetypal energies of these signs or seasons as they're moving through the constellations? We don't have answers to that. We know that it is changing and shifting. We can see that we're in a very speeded up evolutionary time right now. And with the solstices in, on the galactic cross, we know that we're at a very important turning of an age. Uh, and part of it is just being open to what these questions are and seeing what uh, is being uh, revealed to us as we experience this particular time. So for more on the difference between signs and constellations, you can visit shamanicastrology.com. And there is an article listed there that goes more in depth into the difference between signs and constellations. And also for more about the current celestial timings, you can visit uh, my website, kaylincastell.com. And also, the star maps that I used in this pr presentation are from Starry Night Pro. And I'd really like to thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and informative. And just would also like to say in closing that we um, teach a five-day course on the difference between signs and constellations, the whole entire cosmology. Uh, and 
many students who have come through this course have taken it several times and still don't necessarily completely understand this difference. So I recommend going back through this presentation a few times until you feel like you have a really clear understanding and idea of why there is a difference between signs that are seasonal and constellations that are the star patterns that we see in the sky. Thank you so much for watching.